Okay, welcome back to week 8 on the advanced native mobile programming class and today topics is room yeah or room library okay so uh, before we working on the tutorials in our project uh, you need to know several concept uh, behind the, the room itself and others related informations okay uh, before we begin uh, I'm going to uh, introduce you the uh, concept of SQLite and room library and room annotation, data access object, room database, and Kotlin coroutines. Okay, so what is SQLite? SQLite is an open source relation database. It's a kind of database that that you can create tables and its tables may have relations with each other. Okay, so you can do the operations, data operations like doing the query, select, update, delete, and so on. Okay, and it's embedded by default means that um, the SQLite already exists in your phones, in every Android phones, and you just need to uh, access it and do the operation into the database you have. And SQLite is in box means that it's its applications has its own SQLite environment means that an application cannot delete, cannot access, cannot select or update any data from another applications. So you are in on your own applications, you doing the operations in your own applications. Okay, that's the definition of sandbox. However, the drawback is SQLite is low level access means that in order to create a simple query, you have to write a, lo a lot of codes. Yeah, write a lot of codes. You may have a lot of files just to doing simple database operations. And therefore, uh, here comes the room persistent library. It's a, it's a must have, must understand by developer and supported by Google itself. And the room persistent library is, um, abstraction layer of SQLite, provide abstraction layer means this means that this library have um simple and easy to use functions to uh to that you can use to, to doing the operations of database into the SQLite. okay so this just abstraction layer that uh, handle complicated process complicated um low level access and it provide you the high level uh, methods that easy to use with help of annotation and so on and the sql the my, i mean the room itself is compile time verification of sql query so if, if you have a uh, queries and then using the room uh, library it will compile it will be checked on the during compile time during compiling means that if your query have an error in it your application uh, cannot be built yeah it you have to fix that error before it can be built okay and room persistent library have its annotations is a way to uh, marking several codes or a class in your projects that um that be, that will be handled by the rooms uh, during compiling time and during runtime so this is a convenience way to reduce uh, the complicated codes, the long uh, writing codes, by simply adding annotations. Streamline database migration paths means that you can, Room Library can handle uh, database upgrade from version 1 to version 2 and so on. And at least you have need to three files, to define three files if you want to work with Room. First, you have to define the entity class model. Second, you have to define the DAO, data access object and finally the database class itself okay um talking about room annotations is a way to mark specific part of codes that handleable by room library usually with add yeah with symbol add and room have a lot of annotations to speed up your project programming times so for example if you define add query here means that the next function is a custom query to the db and if you define add entity means that the next class will be mapping to the table in the database. Insert also 
same thing it's a annotation to indicate that the next function is doing the insert uh, insertion action okay and so on yeah okay room annotation uh, have a lot of uh, functionality and next you have need to create the data access object yao is a files is a object actually it's not an object it's a interface that provides methods offer abstract access to your application database means that um you have to define every possible operations of your tables inside this dao and compile time room automatically generates the implementations of dao that you define okay so uh, no need to define uh, no need to write the implementations of query select query update delete and so on room will handle it uh, automatically for you okay by compiling them um, means that you um, if there is no error it will done it for you easily using this dao okay and finally you need to define a single database class and this class is using singleton concept because um hope uh, uh, a good a good habit is um uh, if more than one things access the same database it means that this this object must be instance only once yeah you have you only have one object instead of two object okay so at a time there only have there only there can only be one object created one object database created this is the definition of singleton object okay so the the, the room database provide configuration of your database it includes database version migration policy table registered on the table database database name and so on okay and finally um because uh, the database operation sometimes has a, a exhaustive exhaustive um, process yeah for example you have thousand million data and then you want to select all the data yeah it takes a lot of time means that uh, this uh, this operation must be done in background yeah must be done in different threads so you can use rx java or you can use kotlin coroutine with it which is integrated very well with our room library okay coroutine manages your long running tasks in the background thread that might block the main thread and cause your app freeze yeah that's uh it's like us creating a, a thread creating a, creating a different thread and you put your your code inside the thread and good thing about coroutines you can easily switch between threads at any time and pass the result back to the original thread okay and the coroutine itself have its dispatcher means that it can delegate the job to different threads in your applications there are three different threads in your applications main thread io and default main usually um put it as same as the main thread the ui thread means that your job your codes can access ui even it only perform light works yeah calling a ui updating live data and so on dispatcher io usually uh, related with uh, input and output of this reading fi writing files doing data uh, networking downloading files and so on dispatcher did what uh, the default this is a default one it's optimized for cpu intensive works and of the, the main thread means that you can have access to ui but um, it will speed up your whatever process extensive process that you have yeah parsing json sorting a list doing complicated formula yeah doing complicated algorithm and so on okay next um we are going to uh create a new applications new projects i will show you what we are going to create so uh, this is what we are going to create a to-do app and when you click this button you can create new to do buying by stuff blah 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 okay and then you can add it to to do add to do here and it shows a checkbox when you click on the checkbox it will be deleted and because it's stored inside the 
the local SQLite means that your database is exist even though you close the app so you can see here it's still in there it's stored safely in the in the SQLite okay okay uh, let's start with setting up the project and Gradle uh, you need to create a new Android Studio project and name it as Studio App and you may set the github account for this project and make your first commit and push uh, in the next second next week or maybe next week i'm going to give you an exercise for this judo app and you have to to work on it and commit and push after you're done okay um at first we have to add several things in the dependency gradle yeah start with uh, this one the save arguments you may copy paste it from uh, slides yeah you open the build gradle for project and put it uh, put the code inside this dependency yeah this one for save arguments I'm not going to explain it to you but save arguments because it's already mentioned in previous uh, for uh, week 4 next um, you need to open the build gradle module and add um, plugin, yeah, add a uh, plugin setting here, yeah, Kotlin Android extensions and Kotlin KAPT. And the KAPT itself is related with the rooms, okay, if especially if you work with the uh, room uh, KTX Android KTX for room library, okay. Also, you need to, um, to apply plugin here under the build tools version apply plugin for uh, save arguments okay next uh, we going to add a, a few of dependency that uh, that it's is a must yeah that's mandatory uh, if you want to work with the rooms okay you can copy paste this yeah, into the dependency okay so i'm going to copy paste in here okay this is uh, the dependency for navigations and this one is for room the main library for room is this due to t6 I, I believe this one is the latest i'm going to press the sync now button and we need a ktx android ktx kotlin x uh, with the rooms so i'm going to add it in here and cap room compiler here um, is used to solve several error, error that previously shows up if you work with the ktx okay so this one is only like uh, a kind of like a workaround to solve error from ktx here okay next after you're done adding the dependency and setting up secondly we are going to create our fragments okay if you see um we only have two fragments the list fragment and the create to do fragments okay so uh, we starting by creating our project by obeying the mvc mvvc architecture so you can click the these packets and create a new packets and write the model we do it again this time we write view and finally we have the uh, view model all right view model Okay, going to close others, close this one. And the main activity is a view, so we're going to drag it into the view. Just press refactor. If you want to see the changes, yeah, even though the package is already correct, but uh, it renders wrongly in, in the Android project folder here, you simply can rebuild the project to fix um, the render. The structure rendered in the project here okay uh, next we are going to create two fragments one for list of to do and the other for create to do and also we need to to add two drawable factor for fab button and edit button okay so let's add the drawable new factor asset we're going to add the edit it will be a pencil symbol next finish we add one more new factor asset it should be the add symbol 
the plus symbol okay next finish now we create uh, the fragment new fragment blank okay we set name is as the to do list fragment this is our first fragment and we add another one okay let's wait several seconds new fragment blank create to do fragment okay finish okay um first thing to do is um we clean up the codes we delete unnecessary things like we don't need on create we don't need the variable here there we even don't need the component object in in here because we are going to use this fragment as part of a navigations graph that we are going to create next right we delete same thing here for the to do fragment and this component object we can delete and of course you need to in uh, overwrite the on view created yeah on view created for the the for put fragment yeah you did the same thing here on view created yeah just like that okay right now for the layout the to do fragment the to do list fragment um only contains a single uh recycle view okay so you just need to find the recycle view check and drop to the cursor layout make sure you press i'm sorry press this magic one button to connect it to every side of screens and then we also have floating action button okay here you choose this plus symbol and make it uh place it in on on on, on the top right uh, bottom right corner of screen like that and finally we have a single text view okay this text view should be rep content rep content and it should be right in the center of the screen sorry sorry rep content rep content okay this one this one drag it to top and drag it to bottom okay right so this text only shows if there is no data here in the to do so it's it tells you that uh, the to do is empty uh create a new one okay so we change the text right you can write code a hard code text here but uh, uh but i i will show you another way uh, by defining the value for string yeah click this plus symbol string value and then you type the name of string without space without any characters any special characters empty to do uh you don't have any to do start creating create a new one okay press okay press okay yeah that's it for for your text view if you want you can change the style to body one uh, material components body one yeah like that and because we want to display it and undisplay it on uh, through the codes you need to set id for it you do the same for recycler view we set it as rick 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 uh to do list recycle view to do list refactor and the floating action buttons will be fab at right refactor okay i think that's enough for for our uh, fragment to do list now we jump to the create to do it's something like this it has four things three things okay the the, the title the text edit and the button okay so we starting by adding the constraint layout here right we set title for it should be the text view should be match parent match parent i'm sorry should be match constraint match constraint okay so we define 
the title content yeah we define the title here and the top set some distance okay okay yeah 24 24 24 and i need to make it match constraint for the week oh uh, web content here yeah okay and then we change the style to headline 4 yeah headline 4 or headline 3 yeah okay now we change the text of this hello blank fragment with a new value string a uh, new to do new to do all right okay all right and then we drag and drop the text input layout in here yeah set it under the new to do set left set right okay it's kind of difficult to click in here but i think it's okay lah 24 right 24 um find the hint attributes we check the hint attributes and we're going to show the hint to enter the title enter title enter title okay and inside this text input layout there is text input edit text deleted and uh set id txt title okay and we are going to change the style of the text input into the outlined box outline box okay i'm going to do the same thing for another text input layout so i'm done creating the notes yeah text the input with text the note in, in inside it under it and finally we have buttons okay so this button should be put on bottom right okay let's set some distance right so the text should be uh create to do create or yeah just create to do okay yeah create to do and then the button should be btn create or btn add refactor okay okay i think that's it for our fragment layout and and then we need another layout which is item to do layout which is uh, will be rendered as a part of recycle list view okay so it will consume by adapter of recycle view and we need to uh, create it manually you can right click on the layout new layout resource file and then name it as to do item layout enter okay and this layout only consists single checkbox yeah single checkbox like that okay drag it to the left drag it to the drop okay and um i think you need to drag it to the very bottom make it right on the center of screens and then we set it at max constraints set some distance to the left to the right and we going to set this constraint layout the head to the to be wrap content so it's only as hit as this checkbox itself okay the checkbox will be named as check task yeah check task and then uh, we have to add a uh, image view here or button yeah you may use image view or button that uh, indicate that uh, you can edit the check the task yeah after you create it you still can edit it by pressing this icon okay so this one should be emg edit refactor okay i think it's that's enough for layout yeah uh 
next we are going to create the navigation graph all right the navigation graph so to create the new navigation graph you connect, you click the rest here new android resource file and then tap uh, navigations underscore main and we choose a navigation here press ok and then you click this at uh, destinations first you create the to-do list and secondly you create the create to-do so we have two destinations here and the uh, to-do list is the home destinations and we, when 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 cl we click the, this button feb it will goes to here to the create to-do fragment okay so you click this a uh, little arrow here and change the id to action create to do okay refactors and maybe you are going to set enter anim and exit anim to fit in and fit out so we just fit in for the enter anim and you just fit out for this exit anim okay so it's going to have a fit in animations when you click this button and goes to here but before we continue I need you to rebuild the project, yeah, to um to compile the uh, the safe arguments, so therefore we can utilize these arrow actions. Okay. Finally, um, in order to uh, enable the navigations, you need to create the navigation host fragment. So, um, open the activity main XML and then uh, we can delete the hello world and find the nav host fragment drag into the console layout choose the navigation main and click the magic wand name it as host fragment okay refactor done okay so i think that's it for um the the fragment yeah the fragment and the navigation graph next uh, we are going to create the model right the model so right click on the model here we have new kotlin class file just file we name it as model.kt or just model here and we create our first data class of to do okay i'm sorry it should not be constructor here okay so this constructor uh, have two fields first it has the title of string and secondly it has nodes as string why because in our um, create layout we have these two informations the to do titles and the to do nodes okay so we have two um information in here and first we are going to implement room here and we are going to map the to do class here into the table of the database okay so to do in order to do that we define an entity android x room here when you read at entity annotation here the room will inspect or will mark this class as as a part of room um library as a part of room actions and it will be mapped to the table the same table to do inside the database yeah if you want to change the table name you can uh write something like this yeah for example to do table but it it's not necessary if if you um use the default one it will be the name of the table uh, will be the to do lowercase yeah to do but if you want you can define something like this to rename the table on the database with this to do table okay but it's optional okay next um we can define column info yeah column info uh, remember every field inside the class to do here will become a column in the table to do in the database yeah if you want you can set um name yeah or change name for for the title here so in for instance i don't want to use title in my table names 
I'm sorry, my column inside my table names, I want to change it as doodle. You may do so by uh, writing entity, writing annotation column info and set this as doodle. But once again, um, since I'm, um, I will stick with the default name for the class. I, um, I think you don't need to write the column info. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So uh, it won't change because I, we already have the same name for the column info here. All right. Next, um, every entity class must have primary key. Okay, must have primary key. Do not define primary key inside this constructor. Why? Because we are going to set a value for, of it. We are going to set zero or null. And then we are going to utilize the auto generate primary key means that it's same thing like similar like um, auto increment things in a traditional MySQL database. So we have another annotation primary primary key and then we can choose auto generate true and then we create the variables the fields that uh, that will be act as a primary key UUID and it should be integer. You can set zero or null whatever you like. Uh, it doesn't matter because we use auto generate when we enter we enter a new record to the database to the table of to do it will generate that UUID auto automatically okay so that's it for the entity now we need to create the interface DAO that define uh, what kind of operation can, you can do with the to do uh tables yeah so we write to the right click new kotlin flash file just interface you type to do dao enter all right so um to indicate that this one is android chrome dao we write annotation dao here now we can define different operations so for instance we can define insert suspend suspend fund insert all for arc and we can divide to do here to do okay um so what is uh insert here insert here is a notation of rooms that marks the, the next function which is this one to uh became uh insert actions so the a room will insert everything you write in here inside the table of to do okay so what is suspend suspend is related with the coroutine scopes means that uh, these functions can be paused can be resumed at later time in different threads of course and because you know the database operation sometimes exhaustive yeah it takes a lot of resource so you need to a way to make these functions suspendable yeah this is a part of core routine scope that i will i will explain that later yeah but for now um think about this function is suspendable at, uh, means that it can be paused it can be resumed on a later time and it done it uh, minutes automatically by the coroutine itself okay you you can add the, the configuration here on conflict strategy dot replace means that if somehow we insert the same thing with the same uuid in the table of the to do it will be replaced in with the new one okay this is happen if the if some conflict happen means that you insert the the data with the same id it's going to be replaced by the new one okay so what is for argument to do uh, for argument here means that you can put a lot of uh, more than one object of to do yeah to do one comma to do two comma to do three and so on and so on um and you can do that means that this parameter may be contained more by by one to two okay that's it now there's another query okay and select all from to do 
ya suspend fun uh, select all to do yeah of course this one is returning something right because we selecting it will return something a list of to do okay so uh query annotation here means that you can write your own query yeah you can define your own query select all from to do and we um define that this function is related have a connection with this query means that if we call select all to do it's going to launch this query and it will return a list of to do a list of to do okay next now this time i want to select only single to do from to do so we put a where here where you id equals id so where is that we write suspend fun select to do and we write the uuid as integer yeah the uid is integer so it return only single to do so what is this so once again the annotation query here defining this query but this query contains parameter id which is replaceable by whatever you write inside this parameter of course you can add more parameter and blah 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 uh, blah equals uh, id2 for example maybe you can have id2 here as integer and so on and so on so uh, what i'm telling you here is this one is called parameter and it replaceable by whatever you passing it inside this function okay that's the way we can modify our uh, query finally we have the delete the delete annotations suspend fun delete to do and the interesting things here is if you want to delete something you usually, usually delete by uuid by primary key right uh, of course you can write your own query for that for it but the delete uh, features of rooms is it requires you to pass the object that you want to delete so you pass the object inside this delete to do in order to delete the object okay that's kind of interesting here instead of using the uuid okay i think that's enough for the dao next we going to create the database right click a new kotlin class file this one is class do do database enter um this one should be abstract abstract class to do database at database kotlin right yeah at first um you need to define several configurations such as what a table that you want to put inside this database all right now we only have one table which is table to do uh wait class yeah just like that we only have one table and later on if you have more than one table you can uh use comma 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 in here yeah next um we define the versions we also have one a uh, version one of course in later time when you upgrade your applications to the second version and so on and so on you may replace this version with uh, another version uh, increment versions and of course you have to define the migration polar side i will talk about migration later next week but for now we only work with single version and do not alter your alter your tables alter your to do okay and we are going to uh, create different data uh, or i mean alter the data table later on next week and inside the to database you have to uh, write the uh, abstract for each single to do you have right now we only have um one to do dao yeah only have one dao which is to do to do dao here so you just write abstract fun to do dao this is the way we gain access to several pro operation that we have in here so if you want to do insert if you want to select blah 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 you have to go it from this function to do dao dot and you can call select insert or delete 
that we already have provided and then we starting building the component object yeah um because uh, we're going to create this uh, database with the concept of singleton means that uh, we have to make sure that only single object created for the database uh through all whole times okay so first we define a volatile of private far uh instance here of itself equals null okay so volatile meaning that uh this instance will immediately visible to other threads yeah because we are going to run this uh, operations in different threads and this instance will be used with another thread because maybe another thread want to access database means that we um, set this instance as volatile so it's if not null it's visible and it's available for others as well so that's the meaning of volatile and we define an object private for file lock object of any any is a uh, general general classes that got in half it's it's to define anything yeah, any object you can cast it in, in, into different things and we use this lock to lock the process creating database and to make sure that there is only one to do object database uh, created at one time so in this case we first we have to uh, have this one private fun build database we have this our own fax function that have database access and we call the room database builder so we use database builder okay almost forget um you need to extend this to the database with this room database here and then when we call the database builder it needs three things first is the context application context comma and then next is the to the database itself java and finally the database name you can define any database name to do db here and call builder dot build here right dot build and uh, we have this build database and uh, we have to define this operator invoke okay with the context of object and this invoke will be called on the different thread on the fragment yeah um, or in the view model and then when it's called it will going to check uh, whether the instance we have here is null or not if instance equals uh, not equals nulls or you can use alphys operator if you want i'm going to use that instance this one sorry so be this one if this if the instant is not null it do nothing okay it does nothing but if the instance is null and you it does something of, uh, in the uh, left and the right uh, right part of the screen okay so um it will synchronize lock synchronize lock okay something like this and once again we call instance office operator and then we call the build database with the context we pass in here dot also um instance equals it okay so what happened here if you if something created or created this object the to do database object and or calling this or invoking something of this abstract class to do database it will first check for the instance if if now and it's going to synchronize lock it will locking 
uh, this part of codes yeah is like a padlocking yeah padlocking this part of codes means that there only can only have one single instance to hold the time so it's already in lock means that other other thread cannot access it and once again inside it we check the instance once again if null we call build database and after build finish we check this instance itself the to do database itself into this it yeah it's is to do database so therefore um after it locked means that there will be no more than a single instance of more than one instance of this to do database this is how we define singleton uh, object okay next we are going to create a view model so um, right click on the view model we are going to create two view model one for the list to do one and another for the create to do okay so right click on the view model here new kotlin class file choose class and this one should be list to do or to do list view model okay so we extend it to android view model and of course it requires the applications it requires the applications okay and then uh, we create a mutable live data live data of list of to do okay list of to do okay we i'll enter import again okay i'm not going to create this error ld loading ld yeah i'm going to pass it and finally uh, we will getting help from co routine scope co routine scope here and then you have to implement members just press ok and you have this coroutine text and um, first you have to define the variable job job equals job this one is part of coroutines object and we call job plus dispatcher dot main okay so oh sorry should be job all right so what happened here is um we we setting up the coroutines yeah with a uh, job yeah with job defining that uh, whatever you write inside the launch the launch function here will be created in different threads and it calls a job and we dispatch this job into the main thread therefore we can have access to ui if we if we put the job inside the dispatcher main thread okay so that's for the coroutines so how to use that to use the coroutines in our um view model first you have reverse here reverse as you know in previous week we calling this um the rest api to get the data but in this case we only have access to our local sqlite so we sh should put launch function here means that whatever you write inside this launch will be treated as different thread and it will dispatch to the main thread so the launch here uh we call the room uh database builder and we get from the applications text oh how can i get the oh yeah sorry get applications applications comma the to do database class dot java and the to do db name and dot uh, build all right uh picture that you have same name same database name as you defined previously in in your to do database okay so i think it should be like this build and finally 
when you have access to the DB, you can also have access to the DAO, the to do DAO, and then you can call or whatever you want, want to do. I'm first I'm going to select all to do, which is return the list of to do, which is we are going to set it as to the to do L live data dot value. I'm sorry, should be dot value equals to do select all to do. So when we call refresh, it will uh, call this launch um, in different thread in the UI thread, and then we updating the left data. Okay, and also we have uh, defining the clear task clear task functions, which is um, we want to delete the uh, files. The I mean the the to do yeah the clear task will be called when you click the checkbox it will delete the task and we can also use the dao to do that we are going to call the delete to do and uh, once again this delete to do needs you pass to pass the the to do object so i'm going to create the parameter for this one to do to do okay and then we pass it in here all right so we delete the to do we reselect the to do select all the to do and that's it for to do list view now we continue to create another view model this time for create to do fragment and we name it as detail to do view model you click the right uh, right click the to do view model view model here just got in class file and then we write detail to do view model okay and extend it to um android view model and of course it has applications this one also has applications okay and for this for this to a view model we don't define any um live data yeah live data okay for now just only use uh, we only create a single functions to add to do into the table of the database so we also use the coroutine scope sorry coroutine implement member okay and then we have private for job equals job okay we do the same thing here job plus mind main all right okay so we only have single function which is add to do and then we have a list of lists to do because um because in our dao in our dao here it requires you to pass um uh, the the uh, more than one to do here okay of our argument to do here so in the to, to detail to do list model uh you call launch okay launch i'm going to copy paste from this db okay just like that and we can use the dao to to insert the to do so in here in this case you have to write something like this list zero list one and so on and so on but thankfully you can use uh, an, uh, a star or asterisk list dot two type array to uh, explode the to do object inside this list in different parameter here uh, to uh, more than one parameter here okay so that's it for insert to do yeah insert to do a uh, few model now we go back to the view and we are going to set uh, something for our project okay for our view model so um open the view open the to-do list fragment okay this one at first thing you have to define um variable view model and it should be to do list view model okay that's the first thing and secondly you instantiate this view model 
by calling view model provider this dot um, get to do list view model class dot java okay and then because um it has out uh, adapter you need to create an adapter for it but bef before that we are going to set the fabi dot add here set on click listener the fab dot add set on click listener and then we um sorry uh yeah yeah it, it, on the slide i'm dividing the create to do first but uh, on this one i'm making on the to-do list fragment first but that's okay i think um for actions equals um to do list fragment directions dot action create to do and then we call with with navigation dot find nav controller it dot navigate to action so it will navigate to uh, create to do fragment and then we can finish some finish the thing inside this um fragment okay and i will go back here again later on but for now let's open the create to do fragment we also do the same thing private far sorry private let init far view model and this one time is taking from detail to, to view model we also do the same thing instantiate the model by calling view model provider this dot get a detail to do view model class dot java okay right remember it has this button create dot set on click listener yeah button create let me open the layout for you this one the button create and when we press the button when we press the button um we create the to do object for to do equals to do and it takes two parameter of this to do class at first the, the title we can grab it from text the title dot text dot to string and also text the notes dot text dot to string okay after we have creating the to do now we add it to the view model at to do remember that because it's uh, required in in the mo uh, in the model of list list object so we call this off and we put to do into it and i think that's it yeah so just create the make text context comma sorry it should be it context and to do created okay we uh those thing message here dot length short dot show okay after you done adding the the data the to do what you want to do next is f uh, destroy the fragment destroy this current fragment you can do so by calling navigations um dot find of controller it dot pop backstack mean that uh, it destroyed the current fragment and it shows uh, the previous fragment in the back stack means that um, the list fragment should pops up on screen okay now we go back to the to do list fragment i think that's all for a uh, detail to do view uh create to do fragment here we go back to to do list fragment and inside it we all must have an adapter adapter because we have recycle view here so you create the new class and to do list adapter okay to do list adapter of course is extended from recycler view dot uh, adapter and it requests you to have to do list view holder 
okay and we create an inner class of view holder class to do list view holder sorry it should be w in here and it extended from recycler view dot view holder class at we define the view view um requires a view object alt enter import and this will be view and uh wait do i oh sorry it will be to do list adapter dot yeah to do list view holder yeah something like that okay so we put the to do list here to do list of array list of to do okay alt enter import okay now um remember we have to implement members of three functions here the get item count should be returned to do list to do list why i can call oh yeah forgot something you have to write fall here fall because it will define as uh, the data member of our class to do list dot um size and this one we create the inflator fall inflator equals layout inflator dot from from uh, wait a minute from parent dot context context and we have fall view inflator dot inflate r dot layout okay so in this adapter we inflating our own custom layout which is only um has a single checkbox remember that okay let me open it for you this one yeah we we um up, uh, load this layout in our adapter okay and we have to do returns um few sorry uh should be to do few to do list few holder of few okay um i think that's enough for on create now we go to on bind view holder what we do is changing the text changing the text of the check text sorry check task dot set text um we can grab the text from to do list of position dot title okay i think that's it for bind view holder you may replace this set text use property access syntax something like this and yeah oh yeah finally you need to create your own function to update the adapter fun update to do list and it has one new to do list of array list of to do okay sorry it should be list and what you do here is we clear our own list and then we repopulate at all taken from the new to do list and finally we notify data set change in order to notify the whole adapter to re-update itself and display the new list yeah the new to-do list and go back to your fragment to-do list fragment here we create the adapter private fall to-do list adapter which is is a to-do list adapter uh to-do list adapter array of we is yeah we um array list of okay yeah we uh use the empty array to re uh, instantiate the to-do list adapter 
and finally after you done that we going to call the view model refresh view model dot refresh here and then uh, we getting access to the recycler view dot linear layout remember the recycler view must must have the layout manager manager context rec to do list dot adapter equals the to do list adapter okay okay now we have observe view model function uh fun observe view model In this case we are going to observe the to do live data view model dot to do live data dot observe uh, data uh, view lifecycle owner observer yeah um what you do is just updating the adapter by calling update to do list with it which is taken from the live data okay so we call refresh to select all the data of to do and then it we observe the live data and if done it will call the to do list adapter to update its content moreover um we check for the it is empty is empty means that you can uh, shows the feasibility of view dot visible of the text empty else text empty dot visibility view dot gone okay you can short this code a lot by using with uh with the txt empty and then you can call visibility equals uh if it is empty i'm sorry i'm sorry it's not like this should be okay let me copy this first yeah in here so it should be without visibility and should be without visibility okay because we just already use this if if you want you can alt enter it and it became like this you can delete this one delete this one delete yeah okay yeah all right okay now let's try it out okay i have an error here because attached to root should be of false yeah should be false so make sure you change this in the adapter change it to false press a play button again okay this is the result uh, when you click this fab uh, by shoes at store right and we click create to do it will create a new to do for us but next oh yeah before i'm um, continuing uh if you want you can uh, look the database inspector here by clicking view tool windows uh database inspector and then it shows a window here remember you need to have api level 26 or above and make sure the emulator is run still running and it will uh, shows the database installed or defined inside your applications so it has one to two table 
it has UUID, title, and notes. If you double click into two, you will see the content, the table content. Okay, so that's way that's way to um, uh, take a look of your database content. Okay. Next, how can we handle the check text? Yeah, means that to clear a to-do task, you sir have to click on the checkbox and then we delete the to-do off screen. And we already have that function, lead task function in view model. However, the problem is how can we call this function within the adapter? Okay, so to make a clear to you that in the bind view holder here, we can have the holder view uh, item view dot check tasks and then we can call set on check change listener yeah okay like this and we call delete clear task function of the view model from this one from this adapter and it's not possible because um the way to access the view model is from the fragment is from the view model fragment okay and for solution of this problem is you can use interface callback this is a uh, old way java old way or you can passing lambda function okay so i'm going to use passing lambda function by utilizing the power of kotlin okay uh, the ability of kotlin it can passing the lambda function to a parameter inside a parameter Okay, so we can define function in elsewhere and we put it inside this parameter and will be executed if the function is called. So go back to your to-do list adapter. We are going to inject in this constructor a lambda function. Okay, a lambda definition of function. Okay, so we set adapter on click here is a name of the function and it will return of any you can replace any with to do of course and we create unit here right so we create uh, the lambda functions here lambda defining function here and then fragment must pass the function in here in order to work so we call the updater on click inside the set on check check change listener here yeah and we pass remember this is this requires you to pass a parameter parameter so this in this one we passing this the to do list positions yeah we pass the to do object in it okay the adapter on it now go back to to do list fragment you notice there there is an error here because it requires you to write a lambda function in it okay i'm going to write uh, opening and closing bracket here and next um you call item this one is parameter name you can name it as anything you like and we click we uh, define another function here fund uh to click okay and it requires you to passing the item in here So this item is any item, yeah. You can convert it to to do class, and in he, in the, in here you just need to call view model dot clear task, and we cast the item as to do like this, and that's it, yeah. That's it. Okay, um, let's try it again. Press play button again. So. Let's try click the checkbox here. So click, we click this one. It's deleted from the screen. We click this one. It's also deleted from the screen. Okay, deleted from the database. I mean, okay. Um, I think that's enough for today. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me at Andrea Staff or send me message in Hangout. Okay. Thanks for watching and bye bye for now.